New Zealand, our, our general synod has asked us to reflect uh, on the land we live in, Aotearoa, and the, and the structures of our church and, uh, uh, and um, our constitution and so on uh, as uh, part of this last uh, Sunday before uh, the Advent uh, season. So it being Aotearoa Sunday, I think I won't talk about church structures and, uh, and the constitution. I'll talk about Honi Harawira. Um, and um, I won't talk about the man, and I won't talk about his achievements, although I have made some remarks on that which were quoted in the press this week. And I won't talk about his expletives non-deleted, um, though he's quite good at that. What I want to talk about is his name. His name. This is the MP for Te Taitokoro. Honi, Pani, Tamati, Waka, Neni, Haruera. Magnificent Māori name, don't you think? Magnificent. Um, well, the names that Māori people bear tell us something about our history, in fact, and about our church history, and particularly this man. And so I want to dwell on his names today with you. Um, because Māori in the early period of the 1830s and 1840s, when they came in large numbers to embrace Christianity in one way or another, and in their own way generally, um, were very inclusive in the way in which they operated, and particularly inclusive in the names which they chose. And so Aotearoa Sunday seems to me as a good day to reflect on how the rest of us relate to Māori today, and how much we embrace of the Māori culture in our lives and in our um, ways of going about doing things in this world. So we'll start with his first name, Honi. Māori loved New Testament names, and Honi is one of them, John. Um, other popular ones, Matthew, Matthew, Paora, Paul, Anaru, Andrew, Hemi, James, Mary, Mary, Martha, Martha. Lots and lots of, um, of um, names that Māori people bear as their first names are New Testament names, like Honi. The second name I'm not quite so sure about. I have to ask him next time I see him, but it's Pani. Now, if it was a Tuturu Māori name from, old, from the old days, it would be a woman's name because Pani uh, is the ancient goddess of fertility. And although Titafai Hadawira may have had something about that in mind, I don't think that he is named after the ancient goddess of fertility. I think he's named after one of the warriors of David, because Māori liked the Old Testament and used lots of Old Testament names, ra rather more so than, than we tend to uh, in our namings. And they particularly liked the warrior chiefs who supported David. Well, that's not surprising. They're pretty warrior people, and the Ngāpui who are rather more warrior people than most. And Honi Hariwira comes from Ngāpui. So um, in 2 Samuel, 23, if you have a look at it afterwards, you'll see a list of the names of the warriors who supported uh, David. And one of them is Bunny the Gadite. Bunny the Gadite. Translated in the, in the uh, Bible in Tereo Māori as Pani Kari. So I believe the name Pani comes from these warriors of David. Uh, and in that same chapter is the name uh, of Abishai, the chief of the 30. Bunny was one of the 30. The chief of the 30 was Abishai, the chief of Ngāti Whātua, who invited Governor Hobson to come to New Zealand, uh, to Auckland, uh, Tamaki Makoto, and set up his capital here, was a man called Tokowo. And when late in life he decided to be baptised, um, uh, had, they had a discussion with, with his people, and his people said, we want you to have a warrior name. You are becoming a Christian, but we know you're a great warrior, so we want you to have a warrior name. So what better name than one of the great generals for, of King David? So Apihai, as Abishai. Apihai Tokowo, the great chief of Ngāti Whātua, is named after that general of, um, of, of King David's. And I think Honi Hariwira is named after one of the other of the great 30 that fought so um, famously for David and helped him win the battles that he was engaged in 
which are recorded in rather gruesome detail in uh, the book of Samuel. Um, just for some other examples of, um, of Māori choosing old-fashioned, uh, well, Old Testament names which we don't normally use, Matu Taira is one that um, you may have heard of. Um, some of you will be young enough to know um, Reverend um, Kingi Ihaka, um, the Archdeacon, his full title, the Venerable Kingi Matutaira Ihaka. Translate that, he was the Venerable King Methuselah Isaac, because Matutaira is Methuselah, and lots of Māori called themselves Matutaira. They liked the name Methuselah. Maybe they liked to live for a long time, perhaps, I don't know. But anyway, Matutaira is a common name, and uh, if you go to Māori Hui around the country, and especially if you're with Patarangi Winniata, and there's someone in the room that's called Matutaira, you can be sure that Father Winniata will pick them out and acknowledge that one of their names is Matutaira. It's one of his favourites. So there we are. The, the second Māori king was called Matutaira as well, although he got a bit fed up with um, Western Christianity and gave himself another name a bit later on, so we mostly know him as King Tafiao. But he was, Matutaira was his baptismal name, and uh, Tafiao was another name that he took later. So Old Testament names, some of which we don't normally uh, come across, were embraced by Māori, uh, and especially those warrior names. Most interesting, you're converting to the new faith and you're putting away, you're giving up on slavery and you're giving up on war, but you still want to hang on to some of the, the symbolism of, um, of uh, warriors for good purposes, perhaps. Then the next three names that Hwani Harawira has are Tamati Waka Neni. Now, Neni, I can be pleased to tell you at last, is in fact a Māori name from the old days. Neni was the name that one of uh, Hone's ancestors, a rangatira of Ngāpui at the time of the Treaty of Waitangi, uh, was given as a young man. There were two um, who were particularly important chiefs of that part of the Ngāpui. There was Neni and there was Patuoni. They were brothers. Um, and... Um, Neni had particular influence in the Hokianga, and uh, just, down the, just down the hill from where Helen and I have our caravan in the beautiful part of Aotearoa um, called Pakanai near Opononi, uh, there, was a, there used to be a, a Methodist, or what they called them Wesleyan, a Wesleyan mission station. And Neni was baptized at that Wesleyan mission station in the Hokianga. And that was in 1839, just a year before the treaty. And the names he was baptized with were Tamati Waka. Tamati Waka. So he was called Thomas Walker. Thomas Walker was a lay patron of the Church Missionary Society, a, uh, a, a benefactor, a, a philanthropist, someone who gave a lot of money to the missionary uh, effort. Um, and Māori liked to do that too. They were very keen on honouring important people in the Pākehā world when they took on their new names as Christians. So he was Tamati Waka, Thomas Walker Nene. Also in 1839, um, A.N. Brown in the Waikato was baptising a few uh, people who were young chiefs and uh, listen to some of the names they got. Um, one of them became Henry Wudamu, that is, Henry Wills. Now, I hope most of you have given up smoking, but if you are smokers, you'll remember W.D. and H.O. Wills, a uh, famous um, Bristol tobacco company, uh, later on Imperial Tobacco, great benefactors of the missionary societies, both the London Missionary Society uh, and the Church Missionary Society. And so a young Māori chief in the Waikato gets given the name, or, or chooses the name. They, 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 I mean, they had some choice about these things, I guess. Um, but uh, that's what um, Brown um, named him uh, in his baptism, Henry Wittemu, Henry Wills. Another person baptized that same day was called Hawani Piahama. Hawani Piahama. That's Johnny Pearson. And John Pearson was the principal of the Church Missionary Society College in Islington, in London where most of these missionaries got their training before they came out to New Zealand. So he became Johnny Pearson. And then the third chief um, baptized that day in 1839 was called Widamu Paratini. Widamu Paratini is William Broughton. 
the first, in fact, the only bishop of Australia, because after that, they became Bishop of Sydney and various other places. But So William Broughton was the Bishop of Australia, and this young man took his name. And Palateni becomes a quite a common name in many parts of the world. Um, uh, Aparananata's father was Palateni, named after this Anglican Bishop of Australia. So choosing the names of prominent church people in the Anglican world uh, or the or the evangelical Christian world, both London Missionary Society and also uh, Church Missionary Society, was something that, um, that many people embraced at that time. And uh, so we got through Honi, Pani, Tamati, Wakaneni, and finally his surname, his surname. His surname is one of our most famous church leaders. Harawira is, of course, Hadfield. So... His name is John Bunny Thomas Walker Nenny Hadfield. That's the MP for Taitokoro. Harawira um, was uh, a, a name chosen by many because he was um, considered such a, a significant uh, person in the world of the 1840s and 1850s, one of our greatest uh, Anglican leaders. But he's not the only one whom Māori choose to honour. Um, the man Brown, whom I just talked about with those baptisms in 1839, he's Porone. And who's our Archbishop uh, in the Tikana Māori? Porone Ture, Brown Ture. So he's named after that Archdeacon Brown, uh, as he later became from Tauranga. Um, and then, of course, there's Heroini. You know, for some of you who are old enough to like rugby and um, remember the first five eights that played for the All Blacks when Wilson Winneray was the captain and Waka Nathan was the the great uh, panther, well, you'll remember Mackie Herowini, the first five eights. Herowini is Selwyn, uh, and Selwyn, of course, the first bishop uh, of New Zealand. So Māori often took on these names. None of these people are descendants of the people whom they took those names. They took those names because they thought them honourable names, worthy names, names that they would love to wear uh, and to pass on to others uh, who, uh, who came after them. And so. There you are, there's just a few names from Aotearoa, New Zealand, and you look at them and you can see how much uh, embracing of the new Christian culture those early Māori did, and they passed them on, and those names continue to be passed on, both Old Testament, New Testament, uh, church leaders, and also others. There was Winamu Hopihana, for example, who was a Ngāti Whātua chief here, that's William Hobson. So that they had all sorts of names. Hori Gray is another one. George Gray, they, all of those names are around uh, in the Māori world and continue uh, to the present day. And so from those names, via our prayer book, uh, to a story. Uh, now I mentioned the prayer book because our archbishops, they call themselves plus plus in the message I see now, plus plus. So a bishop is plus Auckland and our archbishops apparently are plus plus, but I, according to the message I got, in the email this last week. Um, and um, those plus pluses, the three of them of our church, have reminded us that this is the 20th anniversary of the prayer book, which you don't use in this church very much. Now, you use it on the church service on, on a Wednesday. Can I, can I come along on a Wednesday? Oh, at 8 o'clock. If I join Nina at 8 o'clock next week, I'll be able to. Yes, okay. Anyway, in that prayer book, of course, is the calendar um, uh, of the... Of the um, observances of the church uh, in, in this country. Uh, and they include all of the saints that uh, are known in many other parts of the world, but they include a few of our own. And uh, there's just um, five of them that I want to tie together in a story, uh, which hopefully won't go on for too long. Tarori of Waharoa, 19th of October. Tamihana Taropraha, 18th of May. Octavius Hadfield, 11th of December. Nakuku, 14th of May and George Augustus Selwyn, 11th of April. And they're all involved in this one little story that goes for about five years of our early church history. It begins with the freeing of a slave. Before the Treaty of Waitangi, even before most of the leaders had converted to Christianity, many Māori had picked up that part of the Christian gospel that says it's probably not a good idea to keep slaves anymore. We used to go off and conduct lots of 
uh, warfare and capture people and demean them by making them our slaves. And one of these slaves that Napui had in the north was a man called Ripiho Matahou. And he was released from slavery. And uh, before he went home, he decided to spend a bit of time with Henry Williams, the CMS missionary at Pai here in the Bay of Islands, uh, to learn a bit of literacy. So he learned how to uh, uh, read and write in, in the Māori language. Of course, remembering that the mission of this country was always conducted in Māori uh, in all of those early years. And after he had learned to read and write a little, he decided to make his way home back to his people who hadn't seen him for rather a large number of years since he'd been enslaved um, by the Ngāpui in the north. His people had in fact shifted from the Waikato where he'd been captured down to Ōtaki on the Kapiti coast uh, north of Wellington. And so he decided to walk back there. People did a lot of walking and uh, spent a lot of time going around this country. Bishop Selwyn did a lot of it. Um, and on his way, he was in Rotorua. And, um, uh, and some people he was staying with said, um, what's this thing that we picked up when we went across the hill and had a bit of a war party last week and killed a few people and we found this thing beside a young girl whom we killed? Uh, and Ripiho said, it's a book. In fact, I can read from that book. What do you mean you can read from that book? Well, those markings there on the page, those are words and those are, uh, those are words that I can tell you a story about. Well, what are the words? And so the book that they were showing him was called Tarongapai Aruka, the, the Gospel of Luke. And the bishop, uh, not the bishop, the, uh, the missionary Brown had given this particular gospel uh, to Nakuku uh, and his daughter Tarori. And Tarori was the one that had been killed. The young teenage woman uh, had been killed. She didn't wake up quickly enough. And uh, she was killed and, they picked, and the other men picked up this book and took it back to Rotorua. So Ripiho explained to the uh, Tiarua people what was in this book and uh, told them some of the story about forgiving your enemies and uh, turning the other cheek. These are very odd stories, they thought. Very odd stories indeed. And meanwhile, over the hill, they were have, they, at the tangi for the young girl who was killed, Torori, Brown was present. And Brown heard Nakuku, Torori's father, say, it's our custom to go and seek revenge when we have suffered a loss like this. It's time we stop that. It's time we tried to find a way, a peaceful way of relating to those who have caused us harm. And I don't know how God will do it, but I'm sure God will. That's what Nakuku said to his people. So they didn't go on a retaliatory raid. But a month or two later, they did come. And they did come because they said, Look, a young man, uh, not a young man, quite an old man, a, a, a Nati Rokoa man has been reading this book to us. We don't understand what it's about, but it tells us that we should come and say sorry to you. And so Nakuku said, wow, wow, we Waikato people, look what God can do. Arua coming over this hill to apologize to us? What a fantastic new message this is. Arua has never apologized to us for anything ever. So this must be a good message. And so Nakuku became a missionary in other parts of New Zealand, the father. Uh, and his name is in the calendar of our saints of this country. So meanwhile, Ripiho goes back, gets to Otaki, and finds some people there who are interested in this new knowledge and speaks to some of them, including two men, Katu and Tafifi. And he says, look, I need some more resources. So he sends up to Rotorua and say, can you send that book down to me? And they do. They send the book down to him. So this little gospel of Luke come down to Otaki and they learned how to read and write by looking at this Gospel of Luke. And they become really keen about this idea and they say, we want to know more. And so they go to the Bay of Islands. They go to Paihia where um, Ripuho had come from and they say, we want a missionary to teach us something. Um, and Henry Williams said, well, we haven't really got anyone available, I'm sorry. Um, and there was a, a bit of a weakening of a young man, the youngest, the sickest, the most inexperienced of the people at the Paihia station was Octavius Hadfield. Everyone thought he was going to die the next week. Um, he was such a sickly young man, he never managed to finish school. He went to university, he didn't finish that either. Um, he didn't get a degree, so he couldn't be ordained in England, but he, he went to CMS College, came out to New Zealand, and was the first priest uh, ordained in New Zealand by William Broughton, the Bishop of Australia, but he was ordained in New Zealand uh, and expected to die next week, really. And he said, well, look, I might as well die in Otaki as anywhere else, mightn't I? 
when Henry Williams said he shouldn't go, and so back he went. He actually um, lived for about another 30 years as a missionary in Otaki, and then another 25 years after that as Bishop of Wellington, and later Primate of Wellington, and he died in his 90s. So he had a good week or two. Um, but he was often about to die in all that period. So this is our man, Harawida. This is Hadfield. Uh, and he was the one that, uh, um, that was the missionary at the beautiful church of Rangiatia uh, in Otaki, which was, um, uh, which was uh, burnt to the ashes and has now risen again from those ashes at Otaki. A and um, he is the one who baptized these two men that had come to collect him. And the first one, Katu, became Tamihana, Thompson. And the other one, Tafifi, became Henry Martini, Henry Martin, a missionary in India. Don't know where Tamihana comes from. Anyone knows? Let me know. I'm writing a book about it, so I want to know where did the name Thompson come from. So that was his name. Tamihana's father was Taropraha. Any of you that like rugby will occasionally see Taropraha's um, haka performed by the All Blacks at the beginning of uh, their games. Uh, but the son was a firm pacifist. The son was not like his father. And uh, he became the missionary to the South Island. So he's in our book as the missionary to, to Waipanamu, the missionary to the South Island. He went to all of the places where his father had been a warrior and had killed others. And he said, my father came to kill. I was with him on those expeditions when we came and killed you. I've got a different story to tell you now. I think we should stop that sort of stuff and we should uh, learn to live together. We should live together with each other, and we should find some way of living together with these strange people, these Pākehā people that seem to be coming to our country. And so they came to St. John's College after going around the South Island, uh, and they came to a college that Bishop Selwyn set up. Not the sort of St. John's College which we've got out there now, which is primarily a theological college. What Selwyn had in mind was a college, a collegiate school, a, a, a school which would be a native teacher's school, a native boys' school, an infant school, a theological college, an orphanage, and a hospital. It would be what South Americans call a base Christian community, really. Funny coming from a man who comes from Eton College, as, as uh, Bishop Selwyn did, but that was his vision. It should not be in the town, too many Pākehā that get drunk there. It should not be in the village, too many heathens that believe in old ways there. It should be in a special place. So he set up St. John's College. Um, it was a vision where Māori and Pākehā were equal. And that's what Tamihana loved. That's what Tafifi, uh, Henry Martini Tafifi loved, that Māori and Pākehā were there together. Everyone worked together manually. Everyone studied together. And it was a, 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 an exemplary haven. That was the, was the term that uh, Selwyn had for it. And um, Tamihana and Martini said, we want one of those too. We'll give you some land. Uh, and so, as well as St. John's College, there was supposed to be Trinity College. It didn't come to happen. Both visions failed. Trinity College in Porirua was never established. St. John's College closed in 1852 and never reopened as the collegiate school that someone had in mind. It later reopened as a boys' school. It closed again, it reopened again, it closed again, and finally became a theological college. Finally got a bit of money because Auckland expanded and the haven out there uh, in the sub, in, beyond the suburbs became a lot of land that could support the church uh, in what's now that theological college. So, to conclude, how do we respond to our history? This is Aotearoa Sunday. What are our contemporary visions? I've told you some of the visions that people like Selwyn and Hadfield and um, Tamihana Taropraha and Martini Tafifi had. Their visions were for freeing slaves, for, for um, making peace, not war, for sharing in community life, for sharing in community life equally, for honouring and, and embracing the best of all of the cultures of our land, for educating our young people to the highest possible standards. We live in a society of rather different times, but I think the need for visions about Aotearoa, for visions about how we live together, uh, are just as important as they were in the 1830s and the 1840s, uh, when Nakuku was talking at the Tangi for his lost daughter. We need dreamers for justice. We need respecters of our distinct cultures. We need to know a little bit more about other cultures than we do. Uh, and. Uh, 
And I hope that some of you are dreaming those dreams, seeing visions of the future of Aotearoa New Zealand, which will be our heritage for the future, for the people who come after us, as those stories that I've told you just a little of uh, ought to be, I hope, an inspiration for us uh, uh, today. So, as I noticed you saying in the, uh, after the reading of the first reading, hear what the Spirit might be saying to the church. Amen. <laughs>